குட் மார்னிங் ஆல் இந்தியா சிவில் சர்வீஸ் அகாடமி ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் நம்ம இன்னைக்கு கொஞ்சம் ஒரு முக்கியமான ஒரு பர்சனாலிட்டி இந்தியன் ஹிஸ்ட்ரியில சதீஷ் ஜவஹர்லால் நேரு அவரை பத்தி பார்க்க போறோம் அதுக்கு முன்னாடி நான் உங்களுக்கு ஒரு கிரிக்கெட்ல ஒரு இன்சிடென்ட் சொல்றேன் இந்தியால இப்ப ரொம்ப ஃபேமஸான ஸ்போர்ட்ஸ் அப்படின்னு பாத்தீங்கன்னா கிரிக்கெட் தான் இல்லையா இந்த கிரிக்கெட்ல பொறுத்த வரைக்கும் ஒரு டென் டுவெண்டி இயர்ஸ் பிஃபோர் நைன்டீன் நைன்டி சிக்ஸ் வேர்ல்டு கப் உங்களுக்கு தெரியும்னு நினைக்கிறேன் நைன்டீன் நைன்டி சிக்ஸ் வேர்ல்டு கப் வந்து இந்தியா பாகிஸ்தான் ஸ்ரீலங்கா மூணு கண்ட்ரியும் சேர்ந்து நடந்துச்சு நடந்துச்சு இல்லை இந்தியா வந்து செமிஃபைனல் வரைக்கும் போச்சு செமிஃபைனலில் கல்கட்டா ஸ்டேடியமில் இந்தியாவுக்கும் ஸ்ரீலங்காவுக்கும் நடுவில் செமிஃபைனல் நடந்துச்சு அதில் இந்தியா தோக்கிற தோல்வியினுடைய விழிப்பில் இருக்கும்போது வினோத் காம்பளி அழுதுகிட்டே வெளியே வருவார் இப்போ அந்த சீன் வந்து கிரிக்கெட் ரசிகர்லாம் மறக்கவே முடியாத ஒரு சீனு இப்படி ஒரு ஸ்ரீலங்கா டீம் வந்து அந்த வேர்ல்டு கப் வந்து ஃபைனலுக்கு வந்து முன்னேறிட்டு ஃபைனல்ஸ் வந்து ஆஸ்திரேலியாவுக்கும் ஸ்ரீலங்காவுக்கும் நடுவில் நடக்குது சரியா ஆஸ்திரேலியாவோட ஸ்கோர் வந்து டூ ஹண்ட்ரட் அண்ட் ஃபார்ட்டி ஒன் ஸ்ரீலங்கா சேஸ் பண்ணும் நைன்டீன் நைன்டி சிக்ஸ்க்கு முன்னாடி ஒரு ஃபைவ் இயர்ஸ்க்கு முன்னாடி ஸ்ரீலங்கா கிரிக்கெட் டீம் எப்படி இருந்துச்சு அப்படின்னா இன்டர்நேஷ்னல் டீமே கிடையாது ஸ்ரீலங்கா ஸ்ரீலங்காவுக்கும் சென்னை ரஞ்சி டீமுக்கும் மேட்ச் நடக்கும் அப்படி இருந்த ஒரு ஸ்ரீலங்கா டீம் கிரிக்கெட் டீம் ரணதுங்கா டி சில்வா ஜெயவர்தனா கலிவர்தனா ஜமீந்தா வாஸ் முத்தையா முரளிதரன் இந்த மாதிரி நல்ல நல்ல பிளேயர்ஸ்லாம் அந்த நேரத்தில் செட் ஆகி நல்ல ஃபீல்டர்ஸு ஃபீல்டர்ஸ்லாம் அத்லெட்டான்னு தெரியாது அந்த மாதிரி வந்து ஓடி போய் வந்து விழுந்து பிடிப்பாங்க ஸோ அப்படி வந்து டெவலப் ஆகி வராங்க நைன்டீன் நைன்டி சிக்ஸ் வேர்ல்டு கப்பில் முழுமையாக அர்ப்பணி போட விளையாடி ஃபைனல் வரைக்கும் போகிறாங்க இரநூத்தி நாற்பத்தி ஒரு ரன் அடிக்கும் ஜெயிக்கிறதுக்கு இருபத்தி மூணு ரன்னுக்கு ரெண்டு விக்கெட் ஓப்பன்ஸான ஜெயவர்தனா கழிவுறுத்தனும் கீப்பர் ரெண்டு பேருமே அவுட் ஆயிடும் ஜெயவர்தனாலாம் அந்த காலத்தில் பேட்டிங்கில் வந்து மிரல உருவார் நாங்கள்லாம் சின்ன பசங்களாக இருக்கும்போது அப்போ ஜெயவர்தனா இது உடைய பே ஜெயசூர்யா ஜெயவர்தனான்னு சொல்லிருக்கார் ஜெயசூர்யா கழிவர்தனா ஜெயசூர்யா பேட்டில் வந்து ஸ்ப்ரிங் வச்சுருக்கான்ப்பா அப்படின்னு நாங்கள்லாம் பேசிப்போம் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் எல்லாம் ஸ்கூலில் இப்போ ஸ்ப்ரிங்கினால தான் அவ்வளோ சிக்ஸ் போகுது சாதாரணமான பேட்டில் எப்படி அவ்வளோ சிக்ஸ் போகும் அவ்வளோ ஃபோர் எப்படி போக முடியும் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு அந்த பேட்டை உடச்சி பார்த்தாங்க அதில் ஸ்ப்ரிங் இருந்தது கண்டுபிடிச்சாங்க அப்படின்லாம் வந்து பேசிகிட்டு இருக்கோம் காசிப்ஸ் ஸோ அவங்களுடைய ரெண்டு பேரும் இல்லாமல் ஸ்ரீலங்கா நிற்கிது இருபத்தி மூணு ரன்னுக்கு ரெண்டு விக்கெட்டு இரநூத்தி நாற்பத்தி ஒரு ரன் அடிக்கும் சரியா அப்போ களத்துக்கு வராரு அரவிந்த் டி சில்வா ஹி வாஸ் தி வைஸ் கேப்டன் ஆஃப் ஸ்ரீலங்கன் கிரி கிரிக்கெட் டீம் ஓகே ஸோ ஒன்றுமே இல்லாத ஒரு ஒரு டீமு ஒரு டீமாக உருவாகிட்டு வருது இன்றைக்கி வந்து பர்ஃபார்ம் பண்ணால் அந்த டீம் என்றைக்குமே சஸ்டெயின் ஆகும் ஓகேவா ஸோ தட் இஸ் வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் அண்ட் சேலஞ்சிங் மூமெண்ட் ஃபர் அ பர்சன் அந்த மாதிரியான இது வந்து சாதாரண ஒரு நிகழ்வு ஸ்போர்ட்ஸில் இது ரொம்ப முக்கியமான நிகழ்வு இந்த மாதிரி ஆயிரம் ஆயிரம் ஆண்டு காலமாக இருந்த ஒரு சிவிலைசேஷனை ஒரு முந்நூறு ஆண்டுகள் அடிமைப்படுத்தி வச்சுருந்தாங்க பட்டினி சாவுகள் இல்லையா விடுதலை போராட்ட வீரர்களின் வீர மரணங்கள் பொருளாதார இழப்புகள் முதல் உலக போர்லையும் இரண்டாம் உலக போர்லையும் யாருக்கு சம்மந்தப்பட்டதே தெரியாம போர் வீரர்களுடைய இழப்பு இப்படி நிறைய இழப்புகளையே இந்தியா வந்து சந்திச்சுட்டு வறுமை வேலை வாய்ப்பின்மை பொருளாதார நெருக்கடி சரிங்களா வளமின்மை வளச்சுரண்டல் இப்படி எல்லா விதமான ஒரு கீழ்நிலைக்கு இந்தியா வந்து தள்ளப்பட்டு ஆகஸ்ட் பதினஞ்சு ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி நாற்பத்தி இந்தியாவுக்கு சுதந்திரம் வந்து இப்படி ஒரு ஜங்ஷனில் ஒரு ஹீரோ தேவைப்படுறாரு அரவிந்த் டி சில்வா எப்படி தேவைப்பட்டாரோ அந்த மாதிரி அன்னைக்கு அரவிந்த் டி சில்வா நூற்றி இருபத்தி நாலு ரன் அடித்தார் லெஃப்ட் சைடில் ரைட் சைடில் ஓகே ஃபுல் ஷாட்டு ஸ்வீப் ஷாட்டு எல்லா ஷாட்டும் அப்படி நேருவும் எல்லா ஷாட்டையும் ஆடி இந்தியாவை இன்னைக்கு இருக்கிற இந்தியா மாதிரி மாற்றிருக்கார் சரியா இன்னைக்கு இந்தியாவை பார்த்தீங்கன்னு வச்சுங்களேன் இப்போ நம்ம இந்தியா வளர்ந்துருக்குங்க அப்படின்னு சில பேர் சொல்லுவாங்க இந்தியாவுக்கு வந்து இது இல்லை அது இல்லை கரப்ஷன் இல்லை இன்னும் வந்து தெருக்கில் லைட் இல்லை அப்படின்னு பேசுகிறவங்களும் இருக்காங்க பட் வீட்டில் யாராவது பெரியவங்க ஒரு எயிட் இயர்ஸில் நைன்டி இயர்ஸில் இருந்தாங்கன்னா அவங்கள கேட்டால் தெரியும் இந்தியா எவ்வளோ வளர்ந்துருக்கு சரியா நம்மளுடைய உட்கட்டமைப்பு வசதி அறிவியல் தொழில் நம்மளோட வளர்ச்சி அப்படின்னா ஒரு அபிரிதமான வளர்ச்சி தான் 
அதுக்கெல்லாம் காரணமா இருந்த ஹீரோ யாருன்னு பாத்தீங்கன்னா நேரு நேரு இஸ் நேரு நான் எப்படி டிஃபைன் பண்றதுன்னு யோசிச்சுட்டு இருந்தேன் நேரு as a science enthusiast abin podlama yes he is a science enthusiast isro dae park drdo ellame avare branch neeru is a planner nu podlama yes he is a he is a one behind planning commission of india okay ipdi in neeru va endha tagline la potalum porindhi po he is an extraordinary statesman neeru is a எக்ஸ்ட்ராடினரி ஸ்டேட்ஸ் தான் ஸோ நேருவை பற்றி படிக்கணும் அப்படின்னா ஃபார் இவர் போஸ்ட் இண்டிபெண்டன்ஸ் இந்தியன் ஹிஸ்ட்ரியில் சிலபஸில் நிறைய படிக்கலாம் நேருவோட லைஃப்பில் நிறைய இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் ஈவெண்ட்ஸ் நேருவுடைய அந்த டென்யூரில் நிறைய இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் ஈவெண்ட்ஸ் இந்த இங்கிலீஷில் நடந்திருக்கு இரூல்டு இந்தியா ஃபார் அட் எயிட்டீன் இயர்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் நைன்டீன் ஃபார்ட்டி செவன் டு நைன்டீன் சிக்ஸ்டி ஃபோர் கிட்டத்தட்ட ஒரு பதினெட்டு வருஷங்கள் வந்து இந்தியா ரூல் பண்ணியிருக்காரு ஸோ இதில் நேருவை பற்றி படிக்கணும் அப்படின்னா என்னென்னலாம் சொல்லலாம் அப்படிங்கிறது நான் எப்படி பிரிச்சுக்கிட்டேன் நேரு இஸ் அ ஃபாத் மேக்கர் இந்தியா இந்தியா அப்படிங்கிற ஒரு சுதந்திர இந்தியாக்கான ஒரு வழியை அமைச்சவர் ரோடை போட்டவர் அப்படி வச்சுக்கலாம் ஃபாத் பைண்டர் வேற ஃபாத் மேக்கர் வேற சரிங்களா தோ திஸ் ஃப்ரீடம் ஃபைட்டர்ஸ் தி எவால்டு திஸ் இந்தியன் கான்ஸ்டியூஷன் நேரு கேவ் அ ஃபைனல் லுக் ஃபார் தி இந்தியன் கான்ஸ்டியூஷன் அப்படின்னு சொல்லலாம் Okay, see, he is a path maker. Nehru is a consolidator. He consolidated a nation. If you go to India, 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 then Nehru. Nehru is a peacemaker. Nehru is a peacemaker. He believed in non-alignment. Okay, wow. he loves freedom. And the freedom is not all about you. It is not all about you. He made this non-alignment movement as a successful movement. So, he is a peacemaker. He is a science enthusiast. Science is not a good thing. Science is not a good thing. Science is not a good thing. But, it is not a good thing. It is not a good thing. It is a good thing. He gave vision to the nation. Nehru is a planner. CSO, NSSO, Mahal Nobis, planning commission so so many things so many institutions he built he is a planner for a country every country needs a plan all country needs a plan okay he is a light of asia today's sark and other this cooperation whatever cooperation between uh, uh, southeast uh, with within uh, southeast asia is the design of nehru he made a friendship treaty with nepal went to the bhutan myanmar he made a non alignment listing he made a pancil agreement with china he made conciliation with pakistan also so we can call nehru as a light of asia and nehru is a problem solver see 1947 when india got independence india faced a major problem that is the displacement of uh, this hindus from pakistan and uh, muslims from india to pakistan that migration that happened in india okay that is a uh, painful moment in the world history even we can say that is a painful moment okay so loss of lives law and order issue then uh, we need to find a place for the refugees refugee crisis economic burden so many things he handled it so nehru can be rightly called as a problem solver He, he solved so many problems. He solved even in the Hindi question. In 1960s, uh, then there was an anti-interpretation. Nehru gave a solution. Like, Hindi won't be imposed until uh, the other non-Hindi speaking accept to it. Until then, Hindi and English will be uh, the uh, like uh, official languages of India. So, okay. He is a problem solver. He gives solutions. He is a person who celebrates diversity of the nation. Input, linguistic diversity, 
is he, 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 though he is an atheist he promoted secularism okay he, he gave straight to the um, the aspiring and uh, wherever necessary these things uh, administrative necessary states so we can define nehru like this he is a patriot he is a socialist nehru is a socialist he, he gave an economic model to india that is mixed economic model ஓகே ஒரு சமத்துவவாதம் சமத்துவம்னா நான் எல்லாருக்கும் எல்லா எல்லாருக்கும் எல்லாம் இருக்க வேண்டும் இங்க இல்லாம இல்லாம இருக்க வேண்டும் அப்படின்றது தான் வந்து சமத்துவம் இல்லையா எல்லாருக்கும் எல்லாம் கிடைக்கணும் அப்படிங்கிறது தான் சோசியலிசம் அந்த சோசியலிசம் அட்டைன் பண்ற ஒரு மீன் தான் வந்து கம்யூனிசம் இல்லையா ஸோ நேரு இஸ் அ சோசியலிஸ்ட் இந்த சோசியலிஸ்டிக் ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் டெவலப்மெண்ட் மிக்ஸ்டு எக்கனாமிக் மாடல் அப்படிங்கிற ஐடியா வந்து நேரு தான் கொடுக்குறாரு ஸோ இப்படி வந்து நேரு பிரிச்சுட்டு நேரு வேற நம்ம பார்க்கணும் major events only okay neeru is a path maker na munadi oru udharanathila undu solla maadhiri india vandu oru muttu sandil irukku seriya india vandu oru irunda edathila irukku idu india va eppadi venanalo vandu maathirikalam india vai neeru nenachirundana enna maadhiri india analum maathirikalam சரிங்களா நேரு தன்னுடைய ஒரு லெட்டர்ல வி வாண்ட் நோ சீசஸ் அப்படின்னு ஒரு லெட்டர் எழுதுற நேரு தனக்கு தானே எழுதுற லெட்டர் அப்படிதான் நம்ம வச்சுக்கணும் வி வாண்ட் நோ சீசஸ் அப்படின்னு எழுதி இ வாண்ட்ஸ் தட் ஆட்டோகிரசி வில் கில் திஸ் ஆஸ்பிரேஷன் ஆஃப் தி ஃப்ரீடம் பைக்கர்ஸ் அப்படின்னு வந்து வாண்ட் பண்றார் ஸோ இ டசன்ட் லைக் டிக்டோர்ஷிப் இ பிலீவ் இன் டெமோக்ரஸி நேரு நினைச்சிருந்தா இந்தியா என்ன மாதிரியான இந்தியா வேணா மாத்திருக்கலாம் he was this unopposed leader and in the samagala ulaga varalattile or mega periya thalaivar india var india thalaivar solla mega periya thalai ulagathiliye mega periya thalaivara samagala thal neru undar prathamar candidate neru na neru dhaan neru ku yaar competitor kedai vellave patella solla he is not a competitor to neru okay so so he believed in democracy now we will start with this first sweet the trust with destiny vidiyudan oru oppandam abindrodu thanudey mudal page la irundhu neru vandu onnu solitte irukkar long year ago we made a trust with destiny and now time comes when we shall read him our pledge at the stroke of the midnight hours when the world sleeps india will awake to life and freedom இதுல வந்து ஒரு நம்பிக்கை தரக்கூடிய ஒரு வாசகத்தோட ஆரம்பிக்கிறார் சரிங்களா ஆனா அதுல நம்மளுடைய ரெஸ்பான்சிபிலிட்டி அந்த ஃப்ரீடம் ஆஸ்பிரேஷன் அந்த பீப்புளுக்கு வந்து என்ன போய் சேரணும் அந்த ரெஸ்பான்சிபிலிட்டியும் அந்த ட்ரஸ்ட் வித் டிஸ்டின் ஸ்பீச்ல இருக்கு அந்த ஸ்பீச் ஒரு ரெண்டு ரெண்டு பக்கம் பிடிஎஃப் தான் அந்த பிடிஎஃப் வந்து பாருங்க சோ அந்த அளவுக்கு ஒரு ஆழமான ஒரு தயாரிப்பு இந்தியா முழுவதும் ஒரு ஒரு நாடு இன்னைக்கு வந்து ஒரு பில்லியன் பிளஸ் கண்ட்ரி இந்த நாடு விடுதலை அடைக்கும் போது இந்த நாட்டுடைய பிரதமர் ஒருத்தர் பேசணும் அப்படி பேசுனா என்ன மாதிரியான பேச்சை பேசணும் அப்படின்றது வந்து எடுத்து பார்க்கணும் நமக்கே வந்து ஒரு இன்ட்ரெஸ்ட் ஏற்படும் அந்த மாதிரியான ஸ்பீச் த ஃபியூச்சர் இஸ் நாட் ஒன் ஆஃப் ஈஸ் ஆர் ரெஸ்டிங் பட் ஆஃப் பிரின்சஸ் டிரைவிங் ஸோ தட் வி மே ஃபுல்ஃபில் தி பிளட்ஜஸ் வி ஹவ் ஸோ ஆஃப் ஒன் டேக் அண்ட் அண்ட் தி ஒன் வி ஷெல் டேக் டு டே நமக்கு அந்த ரெஸ்பான்சிபிலிட்டி ஞாபகப்படுத்துறாரு the service of india means for the aspirants i'm saying say you can take this for your interview also you can note this for your interview also the service of the india means the service of the millions who suffer <coughs> so ias is a service <coughs> it is a service of the india which means the service of the millions who suffer whatever action you are going to take as an ias officer it will affect the people illaya in good way or other way it means that ending of poverty and the ignorance and disease and inequality of the opportunity inequality of opportunity the service of india means the service of millions who suffer that is the right way so he, he, he decided to serve for india he decided to serve for the country okay to make india uh, to end poverty ignorance and this is and the inequality of opportunity so he identified the problems 
first problem is poverty in india then ignorance and illiteracy then lack of health facilities and diseases then inequality of opportunity so to ensure this they made this article 15 and article 16 and reservation and other things the thrust with this to me that document is important the ambition of the greatest man of our generation has to be the ambition he, he sets the ambition for himself the ambition of the greatest man of our generation has to be to wipe out every tear from every eye alaga irukla the speech so nammude namm endha naal la irukom okay nammude responsibility enna avarude pesra avarude responsibility enna ellathiye solra maadhiyana or speech that may be behind us but so long as there are tears and suffering so long our work will not be over makkal man makkal kannirla kannir irukku vadikku nammude velai oyadu and so we have to labor and to work and to work hard to give reality to our dreams those dreams are for india but they are also not for india but they are also for the world so he, 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 with this uh, speech he, this is a aspires to be a world leader also so he, he chose the path to fulfill his aims to dreams uh, that means what are his dreams to end poverty and to end ignorance and to make uh, society free from diseases that this is into caste that is inequality of opportunity okay so for his to ensure his uh, dream into reality he chose a path that's what i told he chose he chose the same path which was identified by our freedom fighters that is democracy he believed in democracy <coughs> according to him democracy means tolerance tolerance is very important value for the country like india because india enjoys unity and diversity so democracy means tolerance tolerance not merely of those who agree with us but of those who do not agree with us that is democracy democracy means tolerance tolerance merely of those who agree with us that is not merely with those who agree with us but of those who do not agree with us so nehru will value others value also matra thotathu malli kumanamukkan solvaanga illaya democracy academy is good i say this because other system are worse during the contemporary time we witnessed the fascism nazism in japan and in germany italy and germany i you know he, he knows how dictatorship killed this japan so he witnessed that so he took lessons from uh, history and uh, he chose the path of democracy so he says democracy is good because other systems are bad he doesn't say democracy is good democracy is the best understand so the talaiver kittirundana vara vaarthai ku sadharana vaarthai illa illa serikla democracy is good because i say this because other systems are worse oru mura oru rendu moonu varshathukku munadi speech idam varu oru parliament speech la kodu romba nalla irukum avar solraaru see there there are some problems in democracy okay then what is the solution for that you have to find solution for that uh, there is no alternate system for democracy democracy is a good good system so we are facing some problems we have we need to face it so that is the working of democracy he said he said that that is the process of democracy it is the process of democracy seriya parliament rathile vivadam edirvadam ellame process of democracy it will work on its own so democracy is a good system nehru believes in democracy okay democracy and socialism are means to end not to end itself they are the right means according to me so to work democracy we need constitution right the first uh, this thing first process nehru first uh, work of nehru is to make the uh, constitution that is the foundation for the people <coughs> okay so when india stood at the crossroads there are challenges to build new nations to uh, to build a new nation we doesn't have tool by you are staring back 
there is a grim reality which festering wounds of partition there are poverty hunger and the vast diverse population in india so we we have task of building institutions infrastructure and industries we don't know where to begin but near knows where to begin he knows where to begin so when he defined him as a path maker near knows where to begin his focus was on the constitution to lay a strong foundation for democracy and giving power to the people that is very important contribution of near so he believes in democracy he gives structure to it he is a path maker for india okay so constitution so 19 but this this details under these things you know so i am giving you perspective on so constitution making again how they choose the members so who are the members so what are the committees these things you know so i am giving you perspective on okay so first uh, this is in these are the data about uh, the making of constitution for me and gan neeru gave objective resolution to indian constitution so drafting constitution is important equally giving objective to the constitution what is the path where you need to go that the uh, adayala parthi kaatnam illaya that objective resolution that is in the preamble of the country is very important we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign democratic republic later it was added as sovereign social secular democratic republic okay and justice Uh, social economic political justice to ensure liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship equality of status and opportunity and to promote the manga for fraternity assuring the dignity of the individuals and the unity of the nation so this is nehru's contribution for the constitution he gives he gives objectives he gives task to the constitution makers so uh, here they can uh, make it as a reference to make constitution so then india should be a sovereign country india should be a democratic country india should be a republic that was the idea of idea set by uh, nehru to ensure justice liberty equality and fraternity for its people okay so he believed in democracy he gave rules for democracy to work that is constitution in reality he made election for the, to to uh, to for the working he made elections so first election of india is the uh, it is a toughest task in uh, one of the toughest task for any civil servant this first seat election comes to sugumar sir okay so that, that time india's education literacy rate is 17% only but we have to make them to understand make them to vote okay see the ballot boxes that time now we are using evm machines and other things now technology is developed the people are sometimes they some nations they are voting for you votes and that that time ballot boxes faced with symbols this uh, this symbol is congress symbol and there are there are nearly many political parties were there participated in this okay so with vote you can with empty paper you can vote it uh, for the ballot box which has the symbol so the elections were held on the basis of universal adult suffrage and any one over age of 21 years could cast his vote so 9 18 years ago the rajiv gandhi da amal padi maatha ga apdi illaya 69 amendment 53 political parties consisted for 489 seats out of total population of 36 crores 17.32 crores were eligible voters okay there are 40 percentages of votes poll so indian national congress won 364 seats and the emerged as the single most uh, see uh, the working of constitution through first election the congress party became majority party the second one is communist party of india so this is the map like uh, wherever they got vote and other things so we got a intuition for that so 
So for democracy, you got an institution, and for it to work for the institution, we need uh, this uh, representatives. Among representatives, you choose the cabinet for it. Okay, in this Nehru's cabinet, not only congressman, even this uh, non-congressman also were there, like uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar was the first law minister of India. Then we have Shama Prasad Mukherjee, who is the founder of Jensen. They are not from Congress, but they made uh, this uh, uh, members of first uh, cabinet of Nehru. Okay, so other other very issue now. Actually, all the other talent are there. Yar na makkal kusa or aklo, aungla member of Chitma apikre thala. It's a very important uh, this thing. Even the Ambedkar do he got got last uh, he last two years candidate of uh, INC, but he got selected as. Law Minister of Country, because yes, that stuff and the Nehru identifies his stuff. Okay, so he, he, he gave Nehru believed that Ambedkar ji will give justice to the people, and he, he proved his decision is correct. So, if you are not going to be able to do it, you will be able to do So, Nehru is a path maker. This path is with the roses of democracy. Okay. And Nehru uh, is the greatest consolidator. Whatever the works, this consolidation was done by the Iron Man of India, that is um, Patel, Pallavai Patel, and uh, Mr. Manan, V.K. Manan, uh, who is the secretary of uh, Home uh, this thing. This integration of Prince State is very important task. This is very important task, integration of uh, Prince States. So uh, we are going to explain about three integrations, like one Janagat, then J Jammu Kashmir, then next one is Hyderabad. See, we'll, you will understand the importance of this. Look the map of India, see the principal states, like Pudukote is one principal state, Trivankur here, okay, Mysore, Bengaluru, Goa is ruled by this Portuguese, okay. Then Junagat, Jammu Kashmir, Rajputana states. Okay. Sikkim is in Kodakrat state. Manipur is a, like a princely state. So many princely states are there. Some were ruled by Hindus, some were ruled by Muslim kings. Okay. Some were ruled by even Sikhs. Okay. Wow. So integration is an important task. So first we will see the integration of Junagat. Junagat Patigana, it is in. Gujarat now. See, the ruler of Junagat is a Muslim, but 80% of the people were Saurashtras, Hindus. Okay. So he made instrument of accession with Junagat king, he made instrument of accession with Muhammad Ali Jinnah, and he annexed Junagat with Pakistan. But what is the way for Junagat to Pakistan? So it has to go through Arabian Sea only. This annexation and other things, they can go by Arabian Sea only. That's a threat for India's security also, uh, India's maritime security. And they, they will be losing the, this maritime security that the area also. And majority of the people, they are not willing. They made, uh, they staged the Dharnas and they made uh, strikes even in Mumbai. The majority of the Saurashtrians, they lived in Mumbai. So they made Dharnas all over India, especially in Mumbai also. So Junagat has to be annexed with India. So what Vallabhai Patel does, Okay, Vallabhai Patel offered Pakistan time to reverse the acceptance of instrument of accession and to hold the plebiscite in Janakar. So in this plebiscite, 99.9% of the people choose to India, choose to annex Janakar with India only. So based on plebiscite, this Janakar was integrated, uh, annexed with India. Seringla. So if you a country, or a princess city, or a country, like Pechuar, then they, they invented one thing called Privy Purse, Mannar Mani. That was uh, this, uh, abolished by Indira Gandhi in later period. But see, they have a system like uh, to uh, support princes. And, and Valaday Patel made a system called Privy Purse, Mannar Mani. So Nehru also supported, gave free hand for Valaday Patel all these actions. Okay, then integration of Princess State and Kashmir. Kashmir or a road number you. Uh, Kashmir was ruled by a prominent uh, this uh, Hindu king called uh, Maharaja Arisena. But majority of the population was Muslim population. 
he wants to maintain neutral but so majority of the people were muslims so the maharaja arising he wants to maintain neutrality even kashmirians they want to maintain their neutrality only but pakistan wants to annex kashmir so the like they made on army or this proxy army uh, that uh, that is made up of this patan uh, tribes so they invaded and disturbed the jammu and kashmir so maharaja ari singh uh, he made a instrument of partition with india so uh, with the guidance of mount patan nehru also made this case uh, uh, nehru also accepted for the instrument of partition and he gave special rights to this in 1942 with delhi agreement he gave special rights to jammu kashmir and jammu kashmir was given with the special status jammu kashmir was made part of india but this case was with the advice of mount patan was case was given to even more so near is a staunch uh, this democrat he believes in uh, this peaceful coexistence so then in latter case it, it itself was this decision was criticized that uh, we will see so this is part of pakistan occupied jammu and kashmir uh, they are uh, this, uh, this patan tribes they invaded and occupied this now it is settled by this pakistanis so this region is called as pakistan occupied kashmir this is jammu and srinagar and the other area is occupied by chinese occupied kashmir okay chinese aggression in 1962 so this is real kashmir so as like uh, junagadh pakistan wants to make plebiscite in kashmir also but india denies this because they want uh, this uh, pakistan occupied kashmir they, they india asked them to withdraw from pakistan occupied kashmir then they can conduct plebiscite okay on the matter in a time lay another which one then we can make purpose in india gives a reply for it okay integration of prince state kashmir then other uh, important prince state is hyderabad so that is the largest prince state in india wealthiest also so though he, 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 there was a talk going go between this nawab of hyderabad and uh, mohammed ali chinna nizam nizam of hyderabad nizam mir usman ali was presiding over the large hindu population in the prince state so he has a force called the rasakers they waged violence against uh, people so indian troops were sent to hyderabad under the operation called operation polo within 4 hours within 4 hours the indian army captured this uh, territory so later in an attempt to reward nizam for his submission he was made the governor of the state of hyderabad so that is about the annexation of hyderabad so prince state hyderabad was got connected with uh, annexed with uh, india so that is the important contribution of nehru then nehru was the peace maker peace in the sense he doesn't want inter- he want uh, this internal peace as well as international peace also so nehru's principle is non alignment so non alignment so when there was a power struggle and balance of power struggle between uh, usa and uh, ussr uh, many of the little countries just uh, got independent rest liberated country and uh, this uh, spheres of influence so they need to create they wanted they and created spheres of influence uh, both by usa and the us they created spheres of influence but nehru has a different vision he doesn't want to spy its liberation he, he wants to uh, he wants sovereignty of the nation he wants to ensure the sovereignty of the nation so sovereignty is very important for him so he made a principle called non alignment and the people gathered with him so they made an organization called non alignment okay so we can put india's foreign policy like this first thing is pansi mutual respect of each other's territorial integrity and sovereignty second non aggression third one is non interference with each other's internal affairs fourth equality and mutual benefit fifth one is peaceful coexistence that is very important non alignment which means non alignment has been an important feature of india's foreign policy the aim of the non alignment was to maintain national independence in the foreign affairs okay so it should not be in a team so they have a choice of making a foreign affairs then anti colonialism wherever colonial struggles 
it happened in india in the part so india has always opposed to colonialism and racism so india knows the real face of this racism fascism and colonialism whenever any injustice happened india raised their voice for instance in favor of indonesians in nationality fighting the dutch, uh, dutch colonialism in 1947 so south africa's illegal occupation of namibia okay so these things in, in this uh, against the apartheid policies in south africa india raised its voice then even in indian constitution uh, in dpsp article 51 says this it lays down some of the directive principles of fair state policy and promotion of international peace and security to promote international peace and security to maintain just and honorable relations between nations to foster respect for international law and treaty obligations to increase settlement of international issues by arbitration it believes in arbitration even india believes in arbitration even shimla agreement uh, uh, during indra time which also uh, believes in arbitration and conciliation the non alignment movement the great leaders first leader is jawaharlal nehru sukarno of indonesia <coughs> joseph beristro then kamal abdul wasser of egypt okay so in 1955 at bandung conference in indonesia they made an understanding and pancil agreement was made at that time non alignment was signed in 1953 in 1961 at belgrade conference the non alignment movement Bond. Okay, so these are the five principles of non-alignment. So you know this: mutual non-aggression, mutual non-interference in domestic or internal affairs, inequality and mutual benefit, peaceful coexistence, and mutual respect for each other's territorial integrity and sovereignty. So these are the five pillars of non-alignment. That is also called as Pansil. So the institution formed in 1961. turn 60 years now it is established during cold war to avoid polarization between east and west it is also called as the block against us and south india south ussr though it doesn't have uh, like economic power it has political mileage political and economic turmoil in meet uh, member countries prevented movement from developing non alignment movements completely lost influence after the death of joseph bristo tito then leader of yugoslavia in 1980 so currently this organization has 120 members so in an all alignment movement pathi nariya question la ketrukanga so they will be asking like whether you think the non alignment movement is relevant now whether you, you are thinking that uh, non alignment movement is dying what non alignment movement is doing now? see non alignment is a principle as a principle we need non alignment even now or ever we need non alignment because this alliance only made this first and second wave war we should stick to that point whether this swarm is working or not uh, that is uh, disc- that is the real discussion but we need a non alignment principle as a principle it is good so working we can elaborate its working because most of the nations were developing and the least developed countries only so they can join their hands for other issues also like for climate change issue or environmental issues or economic this thing to fight in wto so they can join their hands we can they can make this to work in other spheres also so as a principle non alignment is good so that may be your answer okay and nearly as a democracy see as a pathfinder we see as a we we'll see as a peacemaker we have seen that and as a science enthusiast he made many science scientific organization for the country just to develop the country just in uh, liberated country he made scientific organization see nehru first he studied in uh, this uh, this one town allahabad <coughs> then he studied in harrow school of england then cambridge university trinity college so many institutions he studied அவருக்கு வந்து எப்பவுமே கேம்பிரிட்ஜ் கேம்பிரிட்ஜ் யூனிவர்சிட்டியில் படித்தவங்கன்னா ஒரு அவங்க மேலே ஒரு தனி மரியாதை அவர் தே கான்ட்ரிபியூட்டட் ஃபார் நேஷன் சி ஃபார் மகளம் இஸ் இஸ் எக்ஸ் கேம்பிரிட்ஜ் அலுமினி ஒன்றி தென் திஸ் ஹோமி பாபா விக்ரம் சாரபாய் ஆல் ஸ்டடிட் இன் கேம்பிரிட்ஜ் ஒன்றி ஓகே ஸோ யூ பிலீவ் இன் சயின்ஸ் த ஃப்யூச்சர் பிலாங்ஸ் டு சயின்ஸ் 
and those, those who make friends with science. He believed this. The future belongs to science. R&D is the never-ending process. Science learn now will be a lot Science learn now will be a lot of things. It won't change, yeah. So, it is not like the other beliefs and the customs. The future belongs to science and those who make friends with science. It is science alone that can solve the problems because problems of hunger and poverty, insanitation and illiteracy, superstition and dating customs and traditions, of vast resource ruining of the waste of a rich country inhabited by striving people. So science in and along Pandu Abina was the Purju Jenda. So Yalla intuition may near the Pandu IAT Planning Commission, ITAs, all the Institute of Medical Science, say Baba Tabitha Center, Steel Plants, Warren DC, Defense Institute Development Organization. Indian Institute of Management, Indian Space Institute Organization, BHEL, Yella Me Orodia, Brain Chain. Okay. He was the bridge between ancient India and the new India. Both basic and technological science can bring social changes. Abina or Ramana. So he considered that both on basic science, like he made intuition swamp. The CSIRs, ICAR, and also the tech technology centers like uh, ISRO, BARC, and DRD. It had the 34th site session of Indian Science Congress in 1947. There itself, he gave agenda for the scientist, who were the identified scientist, who were willing for the nation. So he identified the scientist and he gave task to the scientist. Uh, the first one is PC Mahal Nobis. He was also Cambridge. Yeah? He made an Indian Statistical Institute in India, in Calcutta. <coughs> that is a premier organization that contributed for planning in India. He recommended even the Nobel Prize, first Nobel Prize. It was given to three persons. One is Rajaji. Okay. Other one is, uh, is uh, um, Radha Krishnan. Third one is uh, Chandra Sekhar Venkatram. Sir C. V. Rama. Okay. So, what is it necessary to give Bharatna to a scientist? No one will ask, right? Political Avandi Rajaji Kurutanga, Radha Krishna Kurutanga, but he, he chose him. See, uh, we can see Nehru as a scientist just with these things alone. This, this. So, what are the achievements of ISRO, DRDO, BAR, we know. Without the scientific intuitions, without their support, without the vision, where India will stand. See, Isro, they, they, they sent to Mangalyan, Chandrayaan, Chandrayaan to IRNSS. They launched so many vehicles. They have launched vehicles, GSLV, PSLV, SL, SLV, GSLV, MAP2. Then the variety of satellites, INSAT, IRS, IRNSS, Cartosat. Okay, so Isro, uh, atomic research, we are using atomic energy for electric for uh, this energy production and for uh, health healthcare treatment and for research purpose also we have variety of uh, this stages of uh, atomic uh, uh, power generation we have uh, eight to nine plants of atomic uh, uh, power plants uh, if you are thinking about the DRDO, DRDO has 54 labs and 7 clusters. So, indigenously, they are designing them, which ranges from life science to this vehicle design. He made a CSIR, CSIR labs, ICMR, ICAR, COVID-19, ICMR, intuition survey. He made AIMS, IATs, IAMs. So that such a visionary leader, Nehru. And Nehru is a planner. Every country needs planning. Every person needs planning. Every family needs planning. He, he, he gave a planning commission for a billion plus. The work of planning commission is to give growth and to develop rural India 
for agriculture development, industrial development, to bring economic equality, employment, and poverty reduction. These are the works of planning commission. To till uh, is India had uh, is twelve to thirteen plants. First plant, second plant, third plant were under Nehru's region. First plant is he gave important to this agriculture development of the country, primary sectors. It was launched in 1951. Uh, it, it was a plan from 1951 to 1956. It was based on the Harad Domer model with few modifications. Its main focus was on the agriculture development of the country. <coughs> the target was actually 2.1 percent, but they achieved 3.6 percent. At the end of the plans, they were uh, by IIT set up. So, irrigation infrastructure is very important. Area dams, the number of the period. So, he focused on primary sector. The second plan, he focused on the industrial sector, the two basic industries to produce raw materials. It was made during 1953 to 1961. It was based on the Mahalo model of 1953. The main focus of it was the industrial development. The plan lags began with target growth of 4.5 percent, they are only 4.27 percent. That by it, he identifies the uh, mistakes he has committed in the first two plans. It was made during 1961 to 1966 under the release of the This plan is also called as part two plan, the deputy chairman of planning commission uh, at that time. The main target was the plan to make India economically self-reliant. Economically independent. The stress was laid on both agriculture and the industries also. But uh, unfortunately, during this plan, India faced two wars Indochina War, 1962, Indo Pakistan War, that after the death of Nehru, Indo Pakistan War, 1965. So, that, uh, during that time, India witnessed uh, inflation, food shortages, and other uh, issues also. The target was 5.6%. But the achieved is 2.4 percentage. So, because of that, India faced a financial crisis. And uh, Nehru can be called as later Asia. Well, uh, he maintained a friendly relationship with neighboring countries. First, with China. China had a statement, Zoe and Lai had a well relationship. The Punch Hill, even this five principles of peaceful coexistence, was formally signed between India and China in 1954. But uh, fortunately or unfortunately, India has to give uh, the asylum to the spiritual leader of Tibet, Dalai Lama, in 1959. So, because of that, uh, China has made aggression over India, so which led to India China war in 1962. That is the issue. And with Pakistan also, he, made, he, he first he gave uh, this. He went in constellation mode only, he believed in peace only. In the India Pakistan War of 1947 to 48, also it was waged only by Pakistanis. Okay, so this uh, Pathans uh, sent by Pakistan army, which was, they were the post wars. Then he, Nehru reacted also. He, he, uh, uh, he agreed over the settlement of migrant and refugees, and he was ready to give uh, the supports. Asked to be Pakistan. India's Water Treaty of 1960 is a generous treaty, I can say. So, by this treaty, the rivers like China, Chilam, Hindus, these waters can be utilized to be Pakistan. China, Chilam, and Hindus. Remaining Ravi, Bia, Sutlej waters, India has the sole right over Ravi, Bia, and Sutlej. So, that is his relation and his views over Pakistan. And in Southeast Asia, South Asia, he made friendship treaty with Bhutan in 1949. Till now, India is making a good relationship with Bhutan. 1949 itself, he made a peace friendship treaty. 1950, with uh, Nepal, he made a peace and friendship treaty. So, in Myanmar also, we are maintaining friendship with this treaty of friendship in 1951. So, he was a lighter Asia. There's a problem somewhere. The partition created so many problems to Russia. The Pritisavar country grew up with the Nalamu Kuria Titanam on the Archana Kalanda Maria Nadan Pitch. 
ராட்லிஃப்னு ஒருத்தர் கூப்பிட்டு வந்தாங்க ராட்லிஃப் ரவுண்டு மேட் அ லைட் ஹி நெவர் சா இந்தியா ஹி நெவர் கேம் டு இந்தியா ஹி டசன் நோ எனி திங் அபவுட் இந்தியா டெரை ஹி ஹேட் ஓன்லி டூ மந்த்ஸ் டைம் ஒன் ஹி கேன் ஹாட் கோ டு தி சைட் அண்ட் சி பர்சனலி ஸோ லைக் தட் யூ மேட் ஆன் ஹி ட்ராட் ஏர் லைக் ஹி ட்ரா ஏர் லைக் கால்டு ராட்லிஃப் விச் பார்ட்டிஷன் இந்தியா அண்ட் பாகிஸ்தான் So that to Pakistan in the western side and for East Pakistan also. So there was a violence, killing, mass killing, genocide. Okay, no one can save them. See, uh, there was a one, uh, even there was an order to kill, uh, to shoot the person who attacks railway lines, uh, to attack trains. And the mother of the order slam would be changed. ட்ரெயினை நிறுத்துறவங்க ரயில்வே லைனை சேதப்படுத்துறவங்க மேலே துப்பாக்கி சுருக்கம் நடத்தலான்ற அளவில் வந்து ஒரு கண்டிஷன் வந்து இருந்துச்சு ஸோ தட் வாஸ் தி ப்ராப்ளம் ஈவன் காந்தி வாஸ் அட் நவகாலி டூரிங் திஸ் ப்ராப்ளம்ஸ் அண்ட் டூரிங் த டே ஆல்சோ ஆகஸ்ட் ஃபிஃப்டீன் ஆல்சோ இட் வாஸ் வித் நவகாலி பீப்பிள் காந்தி வாஸ் வித் நவகாலி and nehru was the person who celebrates the diversity of the country many people doesn't understand what india see even <coughs> gandhi came to india 1915 january 9 okay his political mentor gopalakrishna gokhale sent him to to uh, send uh, sent him to tour india that is not just tour to understand india so india is just not an, just not like any other country india is a subcontinent india can india is a continent india is a subcontinent india has variety of climate india has variety of languages india has variety of religion you cannot fix india anywhere customs is different slang is different language is different mindset is different attitude is different to understand india in a better way at least you need to see india once right so nehru sent nehru uh, gandhi was sent by gopal krishna gokhale for that keeping this in mind only this uh, as a part of the were uh, training there is a program called the bharat darshan it was uh, envisaged in that idea only so so that uh, people will be getting familiarized with the indian condition so civil servants will be uh, witnessing india in real so adu da vand idea behind that so nehru celebrates the diversity of the nation so there was a call for reorganization of country many countries were many this committees were made pasil that is jvp committee okay one of that So, there was a committee that was made. Then, when there was a call for um, separation of Andhra from uh, uh, Madras state, Uttu Sri Lam was died. That time, they made Pasilali committee. Pasilali, Kunsu, they were mem- members of that, Kunsu Alexander. So, this Pasilali committee, it gave us a recommendation like uh, to partition by, uh, this Andhra and uh, to gi- not to give just in linguistic lines. but for administrative to consider administrative efficiency also so nehru celebrated that nehru understood that understood the feelings of others nehru even then that there was an anti hindi agitation uh, he understood that so he promised he promised and he lived with that promise okay he celebrates the diversity of the country otherwise he, he, he as a dictator he can he can make anything He, by that time itself he can announce the india is ruled by india's official language is hindi only india's national language is hindi he can announce anything who will ask him? so a person who celebrated he celebrates diversity of the nation okay so even now we have demand for new states like we are asking ladakh this maru state in rajasthan bundelgand region okay in uttar pradesh shaurashtra vidarbha in maharashtra telangana he gave telangana finally royal sima they are asking for the separate state tulu nadu kodagu kodagu nadu then the kaushal desa okay bagalgand gorkhaland 
बोडो लैंड मिथिलांचल पूर्वांचल हरित प्रदेश सो सो मेनी कॉल फॉर दिस न्यू स्टेट्स दे अकोमोडेट्स ऑल दिस डिफरेंस ऑफ ओपिनियन सो दैट्स वेयर नेहरू लिव्स दे आर अंदर डिफरेंस ऑफ ओपिनियन के लिए ये अकोमोडेट्स சரிங்க சார் இப்ப நேரு பத்தி இவ்வளவு பேசியாச்சு தென் நேரு வந்து குற்றமே காணக்கூடிய ஒரு நகர நபரா நேரு வந்து எந்த விதமான குறைகளே காண முடியாதா அப்படின்னா சொல்றாரு ஹிஸ்ட்ரி வில் ரிலீஸ் வரலாறு என்னை விடுதலை செய்யும் அந்த வார்த்தைக்கு என்ன மீனிங் ஹிஸ்ட்ரி வில் சே வாட் எவர் யூஆர் சேயிங் ராங் நவ் ஹிஸ்ட்ரி வில் சே வாட் எவர் ஐ டன் இஸ் ரைட் சம்டைம்ஸ் ஹிஸ்ட்ரி வில் சே வாட் எவர் ரைட் அக்கார்டிங் டு யூ நவ் மேபி ராங் த லேட்டர் ஓகே ஸோ அது மாதிரி மாறுறதுக்கான வாய்ப்பு இருக்கு ஸோ நேரு மிஸ்டேக்ஸ் அப்படின்னு பார்த்தீங்கன்னா இண்டோ சைனா வார்ல பத்தி சொல்லுவாங்க சைனா and they should not have allowed this zoo and like to visit country and no about our situation and all other thing why he made this jammu kashmir issue with the un india is such a army india could have won pakistan so it is a strategic mistakes but nehru is a patriot nehru is a strong leader nehru is a nehru is a leader nehru is a visionary so many things we can say about nehru so as a aspirant we should know how a state statement can perform like nehru so nehru gave vision for a nation nehru gave hope for a nation when no one was there to take care of nation when india was at the crossroads nehru chose the right path till now india so see many person challenge india like india cannot be a country india cannot be a single country the flow per challenge but that couple area illa adu pona irukku but india and the challenge alla எதிர்கொண்டு இன்னைக்கு ஒரு கண்ட்ரியா தலைவர்கள் <laughs> 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 Under, see, even I am sitting in DRU, see, under the years from uh, this, uh, now, one country appears in the U.S. and all of them, one of the states can be done. That was Nehru. So, Nehru was the, uh, really, Nehru is a gift for India. Nehru is a democrat. Nehru uh, is a visionary. He gave so many things for the country. So, we should uh, know more about Nehru. see our letters you, you study is uh, this uh, speech fresh with destiny you study is letter you study is book even his books they, uh, he was in jail for 9 years he wrote books okay he wrote books that can be researched even now he used such a language he has his own thoughts okay so we should accept that nehru is an extraordinary statesman and a visionary so next class we will see about uh, the other leader indira gandhi all the very best please uh, have this idea in mind and you study on your own okay thank you